place under fifth year head coach Scott Moore is Kate Gibbs, Jacob Gibbs, Jake Wadding, Bryson Graver, and Elijah Malone. For Evangel, under third year head coach Bert Capel, Manrique Alvarado, Josh Pritchett, Garrett DeVault, Josh Mason, and Bryce Hunt. The five for the Valor. Grace at 33 and 1, 17 and 1 in the Crossroads Conference. Looking for their first Fab Four since 2013 and ultimately their first Red Banner since 1992. 33 wins already, a single season program record. They won 31 a year ago, came up short of the quarterfinals against Georgetown, hoping to push on to the Fab Four this season. And they start with the basketball in white. Evangel, the Cinderella story, the 15 seed still dancing. Inside it goes to Jacob Gibbs, couldn't finish. And Evangel comes the other way. Three ball, rims out for Josh Pritchett. Joined by Alvarado in the starting lineup, along with DeVault, Mason, and Hunt. Here comes Wadding on the floater, and it's good. Gibbs brothers, Wadding, Graver, and Malone. The five for Scott Moore. Here's DeVault, who had the 22. Hunt, the senior from Cincinnati. Alvarado, step back three, contested, missed it right. Rebound to Wadding. A minute gone, Grace with a two-point lead and the basketball. Malone for three. Rebound, tapped by Pritchett, down to DeVault. On the run into Gibbs. And a pass looking for DeVault, who I don't think even was consciously making a back cut. He was sort of jogging along the lane. It was stolen by Gibbs. Graber throws up a wild shot. It's out of bounds off Evangel. And Grace will keep it. After 86 seconds, it's a 2-0 Lancers lead. Bert Capel in his third season as the head coach at Evangel. Spent six prior seasons on the Valor bench over two different stints as an assistant. Bucket inside, cashed in by Kate Gibbs. And a hard fall for Bryce Hunt, who had gone up to contest the shot and got caught on top of Gibbs, who backed away, didn't really know anything about it, was just trying to get out from underneath him. And it sent Hunt down really hard. It looked like face, shoulders first. So Hunt elevates to contest, and he essentially sits on Gibbs' shoulder. Eesh. Tough to control that landing. Four nothing Grace. Hunt seems okay, stays in the game, goes to work against the much bigger Malone. Running hook is good. How about that shot from Bryce Hunt? The transfer from Division I Coppin State averages six and a half a game. That was a pretty bucket to open the scoring for Evangel. Gibbs on the baseline, gets to the rim for two. Jacob Gibbs joins K. Gibbs with an early bucket, 6-2. The juniors from Plainfield, Indiana. You can tell them apart apparently because Kate is an inch taller. Good luck. Easier to use the numbers. Jumper off the heel from Josh Mason, senior from Nixon, Missouri. Graber live to Wadding, poked away by DeVault, falls to Malone, tried to stuff it but couldn't finish. Good effort by Evangel. I think that was DeVault who took the risk of getting posterized and was able to just bother Malone enough to get him to throw it off the back rim. Fall away jumper. Josh Pritchett missed it. Malone has the rebound. Lob ahead for Gibbs. Another reckless grace pass. Lancers have been taking risks. Mason, running hook, no. Hunt on the offensive glass, had it poked out of his hands, but corrals it in the corner. 
Saves it, where it's grabbed by Pritchett, who took a bump in the back, and the Evangel crowd wanted a foul. The officials stop play. Perhaps a shot clock issue. There's Bert Capel. And he has a lot of support back behind that Evangel bench. From Springfield up to Kansas City, they had plenty of fans on Thursday night in that win over Lewis Clark State. They have more in the building this afternoon. Official still sorting this out, evidently. The shot clock now, well, for a second it was up at 23, then it just went back to 13 where it was before. I guess they changed their mind on changing it at all. It sticks at 13. So that stoppage was for naught. Did allow Evangel to make a substitution. Chase Coffey is on for Hunt. That pass was headed for Coffey. It's stolen by Malone. 6-10, big man on the move. Gibbs tries to turn the corner, lost the handle. Two on one. Pritchett with Alvarado. Pritchett the Euro. Pritchett the layup and the foul. Jacob Gibbs called for the foul. Oh, they got Graber for it. They were both around. Looked like Gibbs initiated the contact. Either way, it'll be two free throws for Josh Pritchett. Grad student from Rolla, Missouri. Leading scorer for the Valor at better than 15 and a half a game this year. A 76% free throw shooter cashes in the first. Wadding has the rebound after Pritchett splits the pair. Four minutes gone. Grace leads by three. Wadding out of the corner. Missed it short. DeVault on the run, one on three. Goes by Graber, into Gibbs, and a foul. DeVault kept going. He didn't have any support from teammates. All the way to the rim, and Kate Gibbs gets the foul. That's his first. Here's Scott Moore in his fifth season. 31 and four last year, 33 and one this year. Probably thinking they might be on a collision course with a team with a similar resume, College of Idaho. But that couldn't come until the national championship game, so a long way to go. The winner of this game will have to face top-seeded Fried Hardeman, which cruised past uh, Central Baptist earlier today in our first game, a game that had very little intrigue at any point in the second half. It was very comfortable. Two free throws for DeVault. Graber, starting five still on the floor for Grace. Pass to a cutting Cade Gibbs, took a contact, and he got it. Count it for Cade Gibbs plus the foul, and he'll have a chance at a three-point play. Get a look at how patient Cade Gibbs is here. In a crowd, got both Pritchett and Coffey in the air. Finished it plus the foul on Jace Coffey. And free throws for Cade Gibbs, who has four points in the early going. 74% foul shooter this season. Grace just rock solid from a shooting standpoint. Field goal percentage overall, their strongest number at 53%. And that's a product of just how efficient their offense is. Great passers. There's a great feed inside from Pritchett to DeVault for the layup. Grace gets a lot of finishes around the rim. But they do shoot 35% from three. And 75% from the foul line. Foul on Coffey who was pressuring Jacob Gibbs. And that's Coffey's second foul already. He's only been on the floor for maybe two minutes. Here's the feed underneath to a cutting DeVault and went right up. So Coffey sits down. Logan Rogers, 6'9", junior from Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Doesn't get a ton of time normally. Is on the floor in the first five minutes. Jacob Gibbs around the hedge, bangs into Pritchett. Goes to Cade for three, off the heel. Weak side rebound, Jacob. From one Gibbs brother to the other, back to the first. And two points for Grace, the result. The Gibbs brothers have nine of the 11 for the Lancers after five and change.
The three on the way, and a foul. Josh Mason fouled by Wadding. Scott Moore did not like the call, and Mason will get two free throws. That's the first on Wadding, and Evangel will have a chance to cut it back within a point after the break with Mason at the foul line. I told my dad from a young age that I wanted to play ball at the highest level. He told me that hard work and consistency would get me there and that he had a plan to help measure and track my progress. What I found is that the journey is the dream. With the help of the best coaches in America, my father and I launched an app that gives you a plan to become the best that you can be. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. There are two key moments in any college journey, when an acceptance letter arrives and the day the college education is paid off. And College Ave Student Loans is with you to help cover costs all along the way. We offer stress-free private student loans for undergrads, grad students, for parents, even loans to refinance your existing loans. Whether you're starting college, already in the workplace, or just trying to figure things out, turn to College Ave and breathe easy. 22 assists on 31 made field goals in the round of 16 for Grace. And that's why it feels funny to say the Lancers are a great shooting team. I would say more they're a good shooting team. 35% from three-point range, perfectly solid. 75% from the line, solid as well. Mason at the foul line for three. Obviously, the 53% from the field for Grace is phenomenal. But I think, honestly, if you watch them play, it's a, more a product of how efficient their offense is and their great passing than it is great shooting in the sense that we normally think about it. It's not like they're hitting a ton of jumpers to get to 53%. They do a great job with their ball and player movement of creating layups and opportunities in the paint. And they finish them at a really high percentage. Mason gets all three free throws. Didn't even graze the rim. 71% foul shooter this year. Carter Stoltzfus on for the first time for the Lancers. 23, Ian Scott was also on just before the break. So the Gibbs brothers along with Wadding, Scott, and Stoltzfus for Scott Moore at the moment. Jacob Gibbs has Logan Rogers on him. Here's Stoltzfus, finds a back cutting. Cade Gibbs, layup, no, rebounded by Pritchett. He's joined by Alvarado. Here's Carson Cavalier on for the first time, and he introduces himself with a triple. Looks to the bench and gets him fired up. 40% three-point shooter, the senior from Waynesville, Missouri. And on his first touch of the ball, he splashes it. And a moving screen called against Stoltzfus on Alvarado. They love it behind the Evangel bench. That's the fourth team foul on Grace already in six minutes. Something to keep an eye on as well. Evangel is a solid free-throw shooting team at 74%. Brett Sikafus on in place of Wadding for Grace. It's Alvarado, Cavalier, Pritchett, DeVault, and Rogers, the five for Evangel. DeVault works in on Scott. The spin, the righty hook with a kiss. Four point lead for Evangel. First time today, the Valor have been up multiple buckets. Six early for DeVault. Stoltzfus got a good look off the heel. Offensive rebound pulled in by Gibbs. Malone thought about it. Got Rodgers in the air. Malone to the rim for the dunk. He missed the earlier two-hand stuff. Wasn't going to miss that right-hand hammer. The energy level in this gym is way up to where it was an hour ago. Alvarado with eight. 
Kick out of Rodgers. Three. Rebound taken by Brett Sikafus. Junior from South Whitley, Indiana. Gets it ahead to Stoltzfus. Gives, attacks, leaves it. Malone couldn't pull in the pass, regathers. Might have switched his pivot foot on the baseline. Gives again into Rodgers and a foul. Logan Rodgers thought maybe he was set. But the officials say it's a block, and Gibbs will shoot two. Malone got Rodgers off his feet. At that point, it was over. Not much Alvarado and Pritchett could do there. And DeVault, you could see immediately, asking Rodgers, what was that? Gibbs at the free throw line. His first one of the day is off. 75% foul shooter on the season. He and his brother have very similar stat lines. They average within three tenths of a point to each other. Both shoot 54%, 74 and 75% from the line. Cade pulls in a couple more rebounds a game. Jacob an extra half an assist. And he's a little better from the three point line, but very, very similar looking lines. Seven and a half minutes played. One point lead for 15th seeded Evangel. Salvi gets inside, lost the handle. Here comes Sikafus on the run, and he was fouled from behind by Carson Cavalier. Not a bad foul. Just put two hands on him, and it stopped the Lancers' break. But he did it without enough contact to where you would be worried about an intentional foul. He had put his two hands in the same spot, sort of on the lower back or hips of Sikafus, and pushed and sent Sikafus to the ground. You worry about intentional foul, but he just touched him which is supposed to be an automatic foul. There's two hands on him. Gage Septon, 30 for the Lancers, is in for the first time. Malone, three is off. He started 0 for 2 from deep. Rebound out of bounds off Scott, who can't believe it, but Evangel will get it. The Valor, of course, the national champions in 2002. Under legendary head coach Steve Jenkins, who was uh, in the building on Thursday night, down courtside, got a big hand from fans from all teams here in KC. Good pass to a cutting Brock Smith, who couldn't get it to go. This is the first time since the 2002 title that Evangel has been past the second round. Malone doubled on the block, backs out to the corner. Knocked loose, out of bounds, last off the Lancers. Malone is furious. The Valor fans are beside themselves. Burt Capel was almost like a third man in this trap. His energy was up. Watch Capel on the sideline as they get him trapped. He's clapping, he's pumping his fist, he's jumping up and down. He's pointing and making the call. That's the energy it's going to take for Evangel to pull off what would be a shocking upset today. Hunt attacks on Malone. Pull up. Too strong. Malone rebounds. Race has started 0 for 5 from 3. They've still made 6 out of 10 inside the arc. A 3 from Sikafus. Got it. Over Alvarado with a little bump at the end of it. Sikafus a 35% three-point shooter, and he has the first one of the day for the Lancers. They lead by 2. Cavalier had that early three. Alvarado working in on Stoltzfus. Fall away in the paint. Baked it in! Can't imagine Alvarado's taking many shots quite like that one. But if you can get it off the glass, you never know. Malone working on Hunt. One-on-one -on -one for the moment. Doubled by Smith. Swinging around Sefton. Pass fake and a three. Rebound secured by Salvi. Past the midway point of the first half, tied up. Cavalier, a deep one. Rebound Smith, back up with it. Good! Redshirt senior from Republic, Missouri, by way of Drury. Gives Evangel a two-point lead. 
Malone the lob. Scott the catch, and he's fouled. Back and forth we go. Alvarado into the paint. One point guard over another, and he got it to go off the glass. His Valor up by two. First time I picked up a Spartan TF ball, I knew it was built different. You know that feeling from that first moment on, it never leaves your hand. It raises you, lifts you to new heights, got you doing things like that. And once you're hooked, ain't nothing gonna stop that. It teaches you to be a student first, to lay it all out, just to do it again. And again. From the moment you pick up a TF ball, it's always there for you. Now do something with it. The landscape of sports is changing. AI is the next evolution. We're bringing it to fields and gyms everywhere with huddle focus. Just mount it, set it, and forget it. Multiple lenses, AI player tracking, automatic recording, or record on the fly with the focus app. Instant uploads and flexible live streaming options. AI is changing sports. Use it to your advantage. Visit huddle.com slash focus today. That Evangel fan base going to be relied upon in this game. You can tell already the way the Valor have fed off their energy. Plenty of great folks here as well. But you can see it against LC State. You've seen it so far. Really, every time Evangel makes a big play, it feels like the guy at the center of it is turning to his bench, turning to his fans, making sure they get all the juice they can out of every play and can ride that emotion. A real challenge for Scott Moore. You'd, you'd imagine the Lancers heavily favored in this game. And certainly it's easy to tell they are as talented and as deep as any team here. But it's 40 minutes. Anything can happen in 40 minutes, especially with the level of emotion Evangel's been playing with, how well they've been playing recently. Salvi didn't get the call. It's out of bounds off Evangel. Stoltzfus steps in, sets up a three from Gage Sefton, and a rebound eventually taken by Josh Mason. Mason had a look. Instead, he drives. Floater, no. Malone, the rebound. That's four boards for Malone, who has started slowly at the offensive end but still impacting the game. Here's a good look. He's missed a couple of threes. Great bounce pass entry to Ian Scott for two. That was a tricky feed from Malone to Scott. He made it look a lot easier than it was, and Scott did on the catch for that matter as well. Evangel back behind off back-to-back -back buckets for Grace. Inside it's Pritchett. Spins and scores! What a good move by Josh Pritchett. Scott was expecting him to go up on the right side of the rim. He just pivoted right on the baseline. Sefton drives, caught underneath, finds a cutting Scott. He gets around Hunt for two. Ian Scott has six points all in a row, a couple of free throws and a pair of buckets. 14 of the 23 in the paint for Grace so far. The Lancers is one of eight from three. Pritchett. Wants it back, working on Stoltzfus. Kick out, three on the way, Salvi hits it. Steven Salvi 
Just two of 19 from three-point range this season. Two of 19, that's his third made three of the year, and it gives Evangel the lead. Sikapus can't answer. Malone after it, Salvi secures it and saves it. Valor on top with the basketball. Final seven minutes of the first half. Pritchett lobs for Smith, tipped by Scott on the baseline out of bounds. And Evangel will keep it. Three changes for the Lancers. Graber, Jacob Gibbs, and Wadding back on. Sikafus, Sefton, and Malone sit down. DeVault is back in for Evangel, and Brock Smith makes way. Four starters on the floor for Evangel at the moment. Pritchett, DeVault, Mason, and Hunt, along with Salvi off the bench. It's a steal by Jacob Gibbs. Wadding runs in, lost it off his foot, loose ball, picks it back up, goes behind his back and scores inside. What chaos on that sequence. Pritchett nearly got there, but by going on the floor for the ball, he didn't have position anymore to stop Wadding from getting inside. Grace has three starters out there. Jacob Gibbs along with Wadding and Graber. Stoltzfus and Scott, the two bench players. Pritchett goes inside Salvi. He has five quick ones for Evangel, already passed his season average, and he puts the Valor in front again. Much bigger Bryce Hunt all the way out on Stoltzfus. Inside Wadding gets a lot from Scott. And that's what I mean. That's what makes their high shooting percentage. It's not so much draining jumpers from the outside. It's great passes leading to layups. Grace has made 10 of 14 two-point shots in this game. That's 71%, which is made up for shooting one for nine from three. Loose, Stoltzfus and Mason tie it up. Possession arrow favors Evangel. So the Valor will keep it with 14 on the shot clock. Get a look at this ball movement. Scott knows right where he's going, keeps the ball high all the way. That's the other thing. Stoltzfus throws the pass high. Scott catches it high. He throws it high. And Wadding just kept it up there. Almost a tip off the backboard, really. Hardly even catches it. Manrique Alvarado back on. Zero for Evangel, along with number one, Carson Cavalier. Bryce Hunt, one of only two starters on the floor, along with Garrett DeVault. Salvi the drive, Salvi the miss, but he was fouled. And Steven Salvi will get two free throws. Kate Gibbs gets the foul, that's his second. Just back onto the floor off the bench. That's not good timing for Scott Moore. Gibbs has had several minutes rest. And now as soon as he gets back on, commits a second personal foul with still five and a half to go until halftime. Salvi shoots it at 64% from the line. Evangelist started six for eight on free throws. 45% from the field, Grace 48. The Valor two of six from three, Grace one of nine. Oh, um, for two for Salvi, that could be painful. But he's already chipped in offensively in this first half beyond his scoring average for the season. Scott looking back door for Gibbs, batted away by Alvarado. The sixth. Make it a fifth Grace turnover. Evangel has four. Hunt has the size advantage on Wadding. Sets up Cavalier. 4-3. A pair of triples for Carson Cavalier in the first half. Evangel back up by two. The lead continues to change hands. Grace has hit four of its last five. Evangel four in a row. Gibbs off on the three. Scott had his hands on the rebound. Ripped away by Cade Gibbs. He lost it out of bounds. Last off Evangel, and it takes us into a timeout. What a start to this game. We've played just over 15 minutes. We've had nine lead changes already. 15th seed at Evangel on top by two.
I have a little birthday message for you from someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. Quick inbound goes to Gibbs, who lays it up and in, and Grace has tied the game. 29 all on the bucket by Cade Gibbs, who has seven points down in the first half to lead Grace. Also playing with two personal fouls. Lancer's back into his zone, maybe in part to protect Gibbs. Cavalier couldn't hit. He's two of four from three. That one was right on line, just a little too strong. And I would think with how comfortable Evangelist looked, particularly Cavalier, on those deep threes, a zone is a dangerous choice. Though Evangel only a 33. Wow, look at Wadding. Another Grace dunk. That's four quick ones out of the timeout. And with four minutes to go in the opening half, the Lancers go up by two. DeVault, kick out Salvi, step back three, way off. Rebound, sails out of bounds. And Grace will get it. And get another look at Wadding, just got to step on DeVault. Elevates for the stuff. Four straight for the Lancers. They've made four of their last five from the field. Graber under some pressure. Manages to escape. Gibbs slashes. Gibbs stripped. Here comes DeVault. DeVault the floater. DeVault the bucket. That's eight points for DeVault without a miss in the first half. And we're knotted up at 31. Evangel, to the point I was going to make earlier before Wadding so rudely interrupted me, only a 33% three-point shooting team. Graber misses. DeVault had the rebound, and he was fouled by Cade Gibbs, and that's his third. That is a big call in this game. Here's the tough finish by, oh, over Jacob Gibbs. And Kate Gibbs has to check out. Ian Scott on for him. The Lancers stay in the zone even with no foul trouble on the floor now. But Kate Gibbs, three personal fouls in nine minutes in this first half. Now the Lancers out of it into man to man. DeVault the attack. DeVault's layup just wouldn't fall home. And Malone clears the glass for the fifth time. Graber, Malone, 4-3. Grace cannot hit, but Wadding has the offensive rebound. Malone spins, dribbles once, gets to the rim for two. Just the second bucket for Malone, who had started one of five. He's missed all three of his three-point tries. Grace is one of 12 from three-point range as a team and still leading by two. In large part because they're 13 of 17 from two-point range. That is gaudy. Cavalier for the lead. Carson Cavalier has a game-high nine points in the first half, and Evangel on top by one. Graber's floater, the answer. Grace just cannot miss from inside. 78% from inside the arc in this first half, 8% from outside. That is incredible. Cavalier works to the foul line. Has it knocked out of his hands. Retrieves it for Alvarado. Working on the much taller Scott, and he stepped on the baseline. Evangel's fifth turnover. And Grace gets it back with a one-point lead and 100 seconds left. Cavalier just able to save it on the sideline. That's impressive footwork. But in the end, it went for naught. He has three triples on five attempts, all from deep. Nine points in nine minutes for Carson Cavalier. Out of Missouri Valley College in Waynesville, Missouri. Averages just six a game. He has nine in the first 18 and a half of this one. Gibbs in on DeVault to the block. Goes up, missed it. Rebound tapped to DeVault. 
A rare Lancers miss from inside. DeVault on the run. Floater, no. Chased it, but Scott has the rebound. Evangel wanted a foul, didn't get it. Jacob Gibbs steps in, turns his back to Pritchett, double teamed, got it underneath to Wadding. What a pass by Jacob Gibbs. Wadding with 10 points, four boards in the first half. Brace leads by three inside a minute to go. Here's Hunt. Faces up on Malone, now he backs him down. To the block. Top shot is blocked. Malone swats it and rebounds it himself. We've had 12 lead changes in this game. Neither team has led by more than four in the first half. Hunt has the steal, he is fouled on the runout. That's the seventh team foul against Grace. And Bryce Hunt will shoot one and one. The foul goes on Jacob Gibbs, his first. A one seed against a 15. A heavy favorite to win this tournament against a team that hasn't been past the second round since 2002. And this game has been played in an eight point window. Evangel is led by as many as four. Grace is led by as many as four. The lead has changed hands 12 times. And look at that split. On the one hand, Evangel's maybe thinking we can play better interior defense and hold them to something below 75% from two point range the rest of the way. On the other, the Lancers are thinking 8% from three doesn't seem quite fair. 35% on the season, they'd normally expect to make at least two or three more than they have in this first half, one for 12. So I think both teams could view that as favorable to them. 28 points in the point, paint for Grace is a real concern from Evangel's standpoint. Just not a ton of size to combat what Grace throws at them. Bryce Hunt at 6'7", Logan Rogers 6'9", the two tallest players who have seen the floor for Evangel, but Rogers didn't play many minutes. Jace Coffey is next tallest at 6'5". He played barely two minutes before picking up a pair of fouls. Other than that, nobody taller than 6'4". Elijah Malone is a big problem, although he's got a problem more so on the glass than in the scoring column, just four points. Hunt misses the front end of the one and one. That could be costly. Just a 58% foul shooter. And Grace now gets the last shot. Chance to take its biggest lead of the game. And there's a foul on Carson Cavalier. If Angel did have one to give, it's Cavalier's second. And a subsequent foul in these final 20 seconds would send Grace to the free throw line. That's another advantage, at least percentage-wise, for the Lancers so far. They've made four out of five. Evangel has made just six of ten at the strike of the first half. Stoltzfus running the clock down. Skip pass Gibbs. Three on the way. Missed it. Rebound loose with three seconds. With one. Three from Pritchett. No. He got a decent look to tie the game. Evangel held scoreless for the final two and a quarter minutes. But still the 15-seeded Valor hanging around with top-seeded Grace, which was ice cold from three-point range in the first half, just one for 13. Carson Cavalier has a team-high nine. Jake Wadding led Grace with 10. And as we go to the half, the top-seeded Grace Lancers lead Evangel 37-34. Stay with us. The landscape of sports is changing. AI is the next evolution. We're bringing it to fields and gyms everywhere with Huddle Focus. Just mount it, set it, and forget it. Multiple lenses, AI player tracking, automatic recording, or record on the fly with the Focus app. Instant uploads and flexible live streaming options. AI is changing sports. Use it to your advantage. Visit huddle.com slash focus today. I told my dad from a young age that I wanted to play ball at the highest level. He told me that hard work and consistency would get me there and that he had a plan to help measure and track my progress. What I found is that the journey is the dream. With the help of the best coaches in America, my father and I launched an app that gives you a plan to become the best that you can be. There are two key moments in any college journey 
when an acceptance letter arrives and the day the college education is paid off. And College Ave Student Loans is with you to help cover costs all along the way. We offer stress-free private student loans for undergrads, grad students, for parents, even loans to refinance your existing loans. Whether you're starting college, already in the workplace, or just trying to figure things out, turn to College Ave and breathe easy. I have a little birthday message for you from someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. What does it mean to be you at CU? Anything you want. At Clark University, we empower you to pursue your dreams. You can double major and get involved. The arts, athletics, campus ministry, you name it. You can do all the things you love with people we know you'll love even more. And with Clark's group and build your own visit events, you can get in on the fun right now. Schedule your visit today and find out how you can be you at CU. The landscape of sports is changing. AI is the next evolution. We're bringing it to fields and gyms everywhere with Huddle Focus. Just mount it, set it, and forget it. Multiple lenses, AI player tracking, automatic recording, or record on the fly with the Focus app. Instant uploads and flexible live streaming options. AI is changing sports. Use it to your advantage. Visit huddle.com slash focus today. In the heart of the Midwest is a college that's different, where students work for their education instead of paying tuition, where teaching Christian character is just as important as academics, and where future leaders learn from world leaders. A college where our love for America is celebrated by preparing students to take their role in American history. This is College of the Ozarks, and this is where lives are changed. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Kansas Wesleyan is an exciting university and a vibrant community. It offers unique, nationally ranked academic programs, engaging activities, and successful athletic teams. KWU combines all of these strengths to open doors for your future. Learn more today at kwu.edu. I have a little birthday message for you from someone, too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome.
First time I picked up a Spartan TF ball, I knew it was built different. You know that feeling from that first moment on, it never leaves your hand. It raises you, it lifts you to new heights, got you doing things like that. And once you're hooked, ain't nothing gonna stop that. It teaches you to be a student first, to lay it all out, just to do it again. And again. From the moment you pick up a TF ball, it's always there for you. Now do something with it. I told my dad from a young age that I wanted to play ball at the highest level. He told me that hard work and consistency would get me there, and that he had a plan to help measure and track my progress. What I found is that the journey is the dream. With the help of the best coaches in America, my father and I launched an app that gives you a plan to become the best that you can be. When I grow up, I want to be a soccer player. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an artist. At Spring Arbor University, we help you grow your childhood dreams into a reality. Surrounded by faculty, staff, and other students who will genuinely care for and about you, you can become more than you ever imagined. Let your light shine at Spring Arbor University. Whips it in, and it's Let's in the go. back of the net! Yeah. First time I picked up a Spartan TF ball, I knew it was built different. You know that feeling? From that first moment on, it never leaves your hand. It raises you, lifts you to new heights, got you doing things like that. And once you're hooked, ain't nothing gonna stop that. It teaches you to be a student first, to lay it all out, just to do it again. And again. From the moment you pick up a TF ball, it's always there for you. Now do something with it. I told my dad from a young age that I wanted to play ball at the highest level. He told me that hard work and consistency would get me there, and that he had a plan to help measure and track my progress. What I found is that the journey is the dream. With the help of the best coaches in America, my father and I launched an app that gives you a plan to become the best that you can be. We are
First time I picked up a Spartan TF ball, I knew it was built different. You know that feeling from that first moment on, it never leaves your hand. It raises you, lifts you to new heights, got you doing things like that. And once you're hooked, ain't nothing gonna stop that. It teaches you to be a student first, to lay it all out, just to do it again. And again. From the moment you pick up a TF ball, it's always there for you. Now do something with it. Recent congressional testimony of three elite university presidents who could not condemn the genocide of the Jewish people only exacerbates the view that higher education is not doing what it's supposed to do for this country. Based on the Catholic intellectual tradition, at St. Thomas University, we don't tell you what to think, we teach you how to think. So if you want to learn how to think for yourself, think critically, and be educated to become an ethical leader for the global community, STU is for you. I have a little birthday message for you from someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a little birthday message for you from someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. Top-seeded Grace, considered by many one of the truly elite teams in this tournament, holds just a three-point lead at the half over 15-seeded Evangel, trying to make it to the Fab Four for the first time since the Valor won the national title in 2002. Nate Gatter back with you from Kansas City. How about the bench production from Evangel in the first half? Carson Cavalier had nine on three three-pointers to lead the Valor in scoring. DeVault was the leader among the starters with eight points. Steven Salvi also added five off the bench. Meanwhile, for Grace, Jake Wadding averages uh, about nine and a half a game. Senior from Chesterton, Indiana, was the leading scorer for the Lancers at 10 a game. How about that finish? That was just a chaotic sequence. He went behind his back in the middle of it. He can elevate and jam as well. And a lot of buckets on the inside for Grace. That was really the story because the Lancers made just one of 13 from three-point range. On the inside, though, 15 out of 20, 75% from inside the arc, just 8% from outside of it. The other part, the Lancers plus 9 on the rebounding margin, which uh, led them to plus 8 on second chance points, and, of course, outscored Evangel in the paint heavily. Though 10 assists to 7, that's not uh, as big a gap as Grace is used to. The Lancers had 22 assists in the round of 16. Plenty of Evangel support here in Kansas City. The 15 seed from Springfield. Tomorrow will be a day off. Monday, the winner of this game at a 5 o'clock Central Time tip here in KC will take on number one seed, Freed Hardeman. Nice drive by Wadding and a finish. He picks up right where he left off. See the three-point numbers for Grace way below where they typically are. I think 35%. Safely a tick or two above average. But just one for 13 in the first half. Mason had his feet a little out of whack and came up short. 
Hunt got a hand to the rebound, but it bounces out of bounds. Five point Grace lead with 33 seconds gone. Here's Cade Gibbs, who starts the second half despite his three personal fouls he picked up in nine minutes in the first half. Hunt wrapped up Malone and a foul on the floor. Bryce Hunt picks up his second. Cavalier and Coffey have two fouls apiece as well off the bench for Evangel. For Grace, Gibbs, uh, Gibbs rather is the only man with multiple fouls. He has three. Wadding bangs into Pritchett and an offensive foul. Knock Pritchett back. And Wadding called for the foul. That's his second personal. Pritchett was knocked off his spot, but he didn't go to the ground. Grace's five point lead is the largest of the day for either team. We played that entire first half in an eight point window. Four point leads for both. Mason on the cut, blocked by Wadding. Graber on the run out. Lobs it toward Malone. It was too tall and behind him and out of bounds. Malone didn't even know it was intended for him. It was that far off. Graber turns it over for the third time in the game. That's Grace's ninth against five Evangel turnovers. Mason. Had to worry about the five second call, got rid of it to Devault. Hunt thought about a three. Entry to Pritchett, finds Mason, took a little contact from Wadding, but gets the finish. Evangel back within three. Good skip pass, Cade Gibbs missed it. Rebounded by Alvarado. Grace one for 14 from three point range. A great look for Kate Gibbs, a solid three-point shooter at 34%. Hunt over Malone. Haven't been many opportunities inside for Bryce Hunt, but he has kept probing. And you wonder if that could be an answer, him trying to use his quickness against Malone to neutralize all that size advantage. Lob for Malone. This time he goes up to get it. Knocked out of bounds by Hunt. And Grace will keep it with a one-point lead. And 18 on the shot clock. Two more games still to follow. We will go to the Dewar Quadrant for top-seeded Langston against second-seeded Indiana Wesleyan. Then down to the Liston Quadrant for the defending champs, College of Idaho, the one seed against the three Morningside. Gibbs is fouled. Jacob Gibbs will go to the free throw line where he is one for two so far in this game. Grace made four out of five free throws in the first half. And a chance for Jacob Gibbs, who shoots free throws at 75% this year, to snap a two minute, 21 second scoring drought. And he does just that. Grace shooting 49% for the field to 44 for Evangel, but just 7% from three compared to the Valor's 36%. Here's Pritchett, leading scorer, and 15 and a half a game for Evangel. He was limited to three points in the first half. That rebound to Wadding. Gibbs lost it on the entry. DeVault comes up with it. A 10th grace turnover. It's one of the things that's keeping Evangel in the game. Pritchett to the rim, blocked by Malone. I think you'd have to point to, obviously, Grace's three-point shooting, but also the turnovers. Uh, Elijah Malone blocks the shot. He has a pair. Foul called on the inbound. If that's against Cade Gibbs, it's number four. It is indeed the fourth personal foul on Cade Gibbs. He's collected them in just 12 minutes on the court. 
And he's going to have to sit, presumably, for at least seven or eight minutes. Might be more like ten. Pritchett goes to Coffey, pivots past Malone, followed by DeVault, has two on him, shovels to Mason, his pass underneath, knocked out of bounds by Ian Scott. The Evangel keeps it, but the timer is down to seven. It's a good move by Jace Coffey, just didn't finish. Grad student from Oviedo, Florida, averages nearly 11 points a game. Alvarado, tough leaner, we rebound Wadding. Coffey was limited to four minutes with a couple of fouls in the first half. Graber drives on Alvarado. Out to Jacob Gibbs. Another missed three by the Lancers. Wadding in a crowd. Spins into traffic. Muscles it up. No. Rebound loose. Last off of Wadding. It's Evangel basketball. We hate to keep updating it after every single miss. Wadding, great hustle after. Just couldn't keep it in. But it really is, to my mind, the story of the game. Grace one for 15 from three. That's down to 7%. Coffey drives on Malone. Got Scott in the air. Layup wouldn't go. But Coffey will have two free throws. Malone picks up his first personal foul. It'll be the third against Grace in the second half. The Evangel's been called for two. Two shots. So Coffey at the line, 68% free throw shooter this year. It's his first trip today. Evangel made six of 10 free throws in the first half. The Valor upset second seeded Florida Memorial by 15 points back in the first round down in Texas. Rolled by 10th seeded Baker of Kansas by 22. Then hung on to a 17-point halftime lead to survive Lewis Clark State on Thursday. Good entry to Malone, who waits and scores. He was patient in the paint, but finished emphatically. Six for Malone to go with six rebounds. A couple of assists, pair of blocks as well. And he stayed out of foul trouble, which has allowed him to play heavy minutes, closing in on 21 of the 24 and a half we played. Coffee from 18. It's pure. Here's Jacob Gibbs. Scott in the high post, double teamed, looking for Wadding. It's stolen by Pritchett. 11 Grace turnovers. Duvault into Malone, a foul. Elijah Malone's second foul since halftime. And look at those Valor fans loving it. Duvault will have free throws. He made both his tries in the first half and route to eight points in the opening 20 minutes. He's added four rebounds and an assist. Also three steals. Those Evangel fans have been on their feet the vast majority of this game. And maybe by osmosis, some of that energy absorbed by the five on the floor at any given time. Duvault splits them. Free throw line continues to be a problem for Evangel. It's 57% so far today. There's Sikafus on for the first time in the second half of the Lancers with their lead down to one. Malone has missed three from the outside. Lobs it underneath toward Jacob Gibbs. Last off Evangel. Duvall can't believe it, and that takes us into a timeout. 14.49 to go in the game. Grace led by three at the half, stretched it to five, but the Lancers now up just one. I have a little birthday message to read from someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome.
shot, whips it in, and it's in the back of the net! Grace up 43-42 with 14-49 to go in the game. Lancers basketball with 12 on the shot clock. Malone, Stoltzfus, Malone, corner three. Finally, just the second three-pointer for the Lancers in 16 tries. Malone has nine points, and Grace opens it up to a four-point lead. That qualifies as a big advantage the way this game has gone. Pritchett. Thought about trying for the answer. Pick and roll with Coffey. Alvarado. Watched by Stoltzfus. Leans in. Created some space. Got the rebound and he's fouled. Elijah Malone's a solid three-point shooter. 37%. Really good for a guy his size. And he has that nice high release. He gets great backspin. But it started 0 for 3. Gets it to roll home from the corner. You wonder if that might just take the lid off the basket for Grace a little bit. The officials are talking this over. The foul went on Alvarado, his first, and a third against Evangel in the second half. Some kind of verdict being delivered to Scott Moore on the Grace bench. And they're sending the teams off to their benches. I don't know what about. This normally happens when there's going to be a review. Ian Scott got knocked down, but I didn't think there was enough in that foul to initiate a review for, you know, a potential flagrant or something of that sort. But it looks like that might be what we're getting here. That is the announcement. The previous play is under review, though. No word on what for. That is indeed what they're looking for. And so it's not on that sequence at the end here where Scott gets fouled. I think it's on Alvarado, who did get away with an offensive foul on Stoltzfus, leading with his shoulder or maybe his elbow. And they're just checking to see if anything here would rise to the level of a flagrant one. I don't know that there's enough in that. That looks like a basketball play. The officials have already walked away from the monitor and they say it is not. I think probably when they looked at it, they might have seen offensive foul, but obviously you can't go back and, and overturn it and it uh, didn't matter anyway because it was missed. They put that on the board just now and you saw it on our score bug because it's tied to the scoreboard here in Kansas City as a grace timeout, but I don't think that's right. But we don't have control of that. That's tied uh, to the scoreboard here at Municipal Auditorium. So uh, I'll keep you updated on that. Well, they, they did charge Grace a timeout officially. So maybe the Lancers took it to try to give them time for the review. Malone gets it plus the foul. Six point lead for Grace, largest of the day. Elijah Malone has scored five in a row and he'll go to the free throw line. The Lancers just starting to get it going. It's been pretty quiet over on that side of the arena, not because Grace has played poorly necessarily, but just because it's been so loud from the other side. I think the Grace fans haven't really wanted to get into a, a yelling match with the Evangel support on the opposite side of the that far sideline. Free throw missed badly, but it's loose and saved into the backcourt. Evangel wanted an over and back. The officials say there was no possession. And Stoltzfus throws it off the leg of Josh Pritchett. That would be an interesting one to see again because while it was a scramble play, and Burt Capel is very upset, while it was a scramble play, it did look like Grace secured possession, even if while lying on the ground, and then threw it in the backcourt without it getting tipped, which would be an over and back, despite the fact that it was sort of off a scramble sequence. And they're going to have to come out and clean the floor now. So let's look at it again. Malone misses the free throw way short and it creates a, a weird rebound that ricochets away. 
Sikafus maybe is out of bounds and then also seems to, to get something close to possession. Sure, he's never able to stand up with it, but he has control of the basketball. It's cupped in his arm and then he's able to throw it. So I think uh, Evangel maybe has two points they're concerned about, whether he was out of bounds and also whether it was an over and back. Either way, Grace keeps it. Scott with nine to shoot. Turns off a ball fake, got it to go off the window. The Lancers can't believe there wasn't a foul. There was certainly a sound from here. Couldn't tell if it was hand on ball or hand on arm. Either way, Grace leads by eight. Pritchett spins on Gibbs to the block, no. And Gibbs has the rebound. Largest lead for Grace and it could build. Scott to the rim. It's double figures for the top seeded Lancers. You'd have to think a Burt Capel timeout is coming before too long, but he's letting his valor play through it. A 9-0 Lancers run, and it's taken just a minute and a half. Bounce pass entry, good feed and finish by Josh Pritchett. Important bucket for the Valor. Ball's tipped out of bounds by Pritchett, and Grace will keep it. Here's the Scott bucket. He is so long. Can't tell really from that angle if there was a foul, and maybe the officials didn't want to call one after Evangel had a good case, I think, on the, on the loose ball sequence. Scott gets back-to-back -back buckets. That made it a 10-point Grace lead. It's at eight for the moment. Stoltzfus gets the high screen. Gibbs had it knocked free. Pulls it back in. Sikafu's triple. Weak side rebound, Scott. He takes a bump. And a foul. Foul goes on Brock Smith just into the game. 14 for Evangel, his second. That's the fifth on the Valor. Still pretty early in the second half. Four have been called on Grace as well. Wadding did well to pull in that low pass rather casually. Sikafus tries again. Scott went down and a foul called on Brock Smith. He picks up two very quickly. Might have been an and one situation had the three gone down. Instead, it's a foul on the floor. And the Lancers will have a side out with 12.28 left. They reset the timer to 20. And now for almost 12 and a half minutes, Grace will be in the bonus the rest of the way. 75% free throw shooting team that's made six of eight so far, right on the season average. Scott High, underneath Gibbs, missed the layup. Maybe just took his eye off the rim. He saw Cavalier coming over. A couple of times we've seen Evangel guards make gutsy plays underneath just to try to challenge shots. Cavalier just grazes the rim. Stoltzfus, Sikafus, Scott, Euro took a hit to the face from Cavalier, didn't get a whistle. Wadding in a straight jacket. Scott the follow, still loose. Sikafus went diving in, but Coffey pulled it away. Scott took a hard hit to the head. Alvarado to the baseline. Coffey bangs into Scott once and twice. The pivot. Layup, no. Rebound, Scott. And a tie up underneath, a violent one at that between Duvall, Garrett Duvall, and Ian Scott. This is getting physical. Coffee bangs into Scott, who's never afraid of a rebound. And it's a held ball. Possession arrow favors Grace. The Lancers with 20 on the shot clock at an eight point lead, or rather uh, favors Evangel, I should say, with 20 on the shot clock, trailing by eight. Here's Smith, Alvarado into Stoltzfus and a blocking foul. The gray side is getting very frustrated with these last couple of minutes. Make it Sikafus who gets the foul. That's his first and the team's fifth. Wadding has three, of course, Cade Gibbs has four. Some foul trouble of note for the Lancers. Lob in quickly to Salvi. Just touched it over the rim and down. 
Seven points for Salvi. His first two since halftime. Jacob Gibbs is fouled by Brock Smith, who's picked up three fouls in just a couple of minutes on the floor in the second half. He has four now in the game with still 11-16 to go. And maybe most importantly, it's the seventh Evangel team foul. And Jacob Gibbs, a 75% foul shooter who's made three out of four in this game, will go to the free throw line. He earns a second. Two for Scott. Checking in for the Lancers, number 22, Preston Greenberg. Bryson Graber back on for the Lancers. Gibbs sits down. Smith stays in with four fouls for Evangel. Salvi tried to whip it underneath to Logan Rogers, and the officials say it's last off of Evangel. There's going to be a conversation here. They might overturn it, and indeed they do. So the Valor keep it with 17 to shoot. Grace up 54 46. Cavalier to trigger. He gets it back. Has not scored yet in the second half. Had those three triples in the first half. Rodgers. Smith for three. Good. Big shot from Brock Smith. Pulls it within five. What kind of answer do the Lancers have? No Malone on the floor, neither Gibbs' brother. They go to Scott. He is fouled on the baseline by Rogers. That's 18 fouls in nine and a half minutes called against Evangel. Rogers gets his second, and a one and one coming for Ian Smith, or Ian Scott, I should say, who is two for two at the line, has 10 points in the game, you know, with five rebounds, three assists. He's been very good. 74% foul shooter, gets a second one. Malone returns for the Lancers, who don't seem too concerned about the possibility of a Scott miss because Malone's not even going to line up for the rebound. He's just going to drop back and get ready to anchor the defense. A couple of block shots already in the game, 11 points, 7 rebounds. Scott gets both. The Lancers have made 10 out of 12 at the free throw line. That's 83%. And their lead is back to 7. Cavalier, good luck. Hits it. Carson Cavalier has four three-pointers. And Evangel trails by four after back-to-back -back triples. Lobbed to Malone and a foul on Rodgers, who had a fistful of Malone's jersey or shorts or both. A ninth team foul in 10 minutes on Evangel. Rodgers' third foul. And Malone will shoot one and one. After this, it'll be 10 plus minutes of double bonus for Grace. And considering how they've struggled to shoot the three, that is really hurtful for Evangel because it could be a great option for the Lancers who are a good free throw shooting team and have shot them very well so far. Grace hasn't had a field goal for the last three minutes and four seconds. And still Evangel has hardly cut into the lead because in that span, the Lancers have made five out of six free throws even after that miss. But Evangel has managed to close it from as many as 10 down to five. Cavalier cuts in a crowd, try to bounce pass to Rogers that knocked out of bounds off one or two Grace feet. And that takes us to a timeout. 9.59 to go in the game. Evangel basketball, the 15th seeded Valor trying to hang around. Top seeded Grace up by five. I have a little birthday message for you from someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. From our first day, 
Roosevelt has been a place for all. Before it was widely accepted, Dr. Edward Sparling stood for social justice. When asked to take a racial and religious census, he simply responded, we don't count that way. And 62 faculty members walked out with him. Together, they founded Roosevelt University, a place for you to belong. since the 217 mark of the opening half. They've trailed by as many as 10, but on a 10 to five run over the last three and a half minutes to cut it down to five. Cavalier in trouble, shot clock running down. Rogers with four. Cavalier has to hoist. Off to the left, rebound Ian Scott. Lob for Malone. Deep catch, goes up, he has it blocked. And a held ball is the call. The arrow favors Grace, so the Lancers keep it with 19 on the timer. I think that was Steven Salvi who got up and got his hand on top of the would-be Malone layup. 6-4 getting a block on 6-10. And Bryce Hunt, the senior, returns to the floor. 6-7 brings the most size of the starters. Scott couldn't get it. Rebounded by Mason. Mason turns the corner, gets to the rim, swatted by Malone. Third block, Scott on the run out. Goes behind his back, past Smith, wadding the follow, but a foul was called on Bryce Hunt, who is shocked. That's his second and the 10th on Evangel. It'll be two free throws, obviously, for the shooting foul, but also officially puts Grace into the double bonus with 9.19 still to go in the game. Now the Lancers have been called for five fouls, so Evangel's going to be hitting the bonus most likely in the next couple of minutes as well. But that tenth foul is nonetheless a significant upgrade. Scott has hit all five of his free throws now. He has a game-high 13 points. Missed that one, but Wadding tips it up and in. Scott's first miss for Grace, and it got them extra points. Three-point trip for the Lancers, who lead by eight. Mason. Salvi high post with seven. Kick out, Mason off a ball fake. Good look. Short, rebound Smith. Mason thought about it again. Graber closes out on him. Evangel wanted a foul and got it. Graber just wrapped him up a little bit. Take another look back at Wadding, who saw Ian Scott take over the game lead with 13 points, said not so fast. There's 14. Scott has 14, or rather Wadding 14, Scott 13, Malone 12. Cavalier leads Evangel with a dozen. Make it 15. Carson Cavalier leads all scores. And he pulls Evangel back within five on his fifth three-pointer of the game. Wadding got Salvi in the air. Over Hunt, floater no. Follow Malone for two. Cavalier for Bryce Hunt. Isolated on Malone. Salvi came charging in, knocked Wadding down. Shot is blocked by Scott who saves it, Pritchett ends up with it. He goes up off the side of the backboard, still loose, and eventually pulled in by Malone. Graber, bounce pass, Scott, blocked by Hunt, counted, plus a foul! Would you believe that break? 
What a pass by Graber. What a finish by Scott. A 30-foot bounce pass, and Scott got it to trickle off the back rim through the twine to give Grace a seven-point lead with 7.53 to go. Make it a nine-point advantage now for the Lancers. 7.53 left in the game. And the officials are talking something over again. Might there be something to review out of that sequence? Can't imagine the Bryce Hunt foul would be a flagrant. Looked like he got wrist and arm, if anything. Maybe at the other end, they're worried about something that happened in that chaos in the paint. Bryce Hunt is protesting what was his third personal foul. This seems to be what's at issue. And if anything, there's a lot of ball there, I think. Might be a foul, certainly. I wouldn't think that's a, there's a flagrant there. That seems to be what the officials are looking at. We'll get confirmation here in just a moment. They are indeed looking for a potential flagrant on this play. And uh, I'm surprised it's taken two looks, to be honest. I, I'm not saying it's not a foul on Bryce Hunt necessarily, but he's clearly going for the ball there. Just gets a piece of Scott. It's a high-speed mid-air collision. And there is indeed no flagrant foul. It'll be just one free throw for Scott after the foul. They made it a nine-point race lead. He has 15 now, equaling Cavalier for the game high. And he'll go back to the free throw line where he has made five out of six. Hunt sits down with three fouls. They are mounting for Evangel. 11 fouls on the Valor, six for Grace in the second half. But again, now the Valor will be in the bonus for the final 7.53, at least shooting one and one on every subsequent foul. Scott cashes in, make it 16 and six for him to go with three assists as well and a block. Elijah Malone closing in on a double-double, 14 and nine. Wadding has 14 and eight. Here's Mason. Pritchett. Eight to shoot. Coffee. Got Malone in the air. Pritchett goes into Scott. No call. Stoltz missed the rebound. Stoltz was on the crossover, wadding on the baseline. Cut off by Pritchett and he lost it. 12th grace turnover. Corner, Mason, short. Scott has the Lancers rebound. Wadding, floater over Pritchett, won't drop. Rebound, Pritchett has it and he's fouled by Malone. They continue to go after it. And the officials have to separate Malone and Pritchett, who are talking it out. No, they didn't call a foul. They called a jump ball. It favors Evangel either way. They'll get possession. I think Pritchett's just finding out it wasn't a foul. Let's see. Probably fair. At, by the end, it looks like Malone is on his back. But you can see there where the ball's initially coming off the rim, they're really more like side by side. Duvault has been quiet in the second half. Curling coffee to the rim. Nice right hand finish. Cuts it down to eight, but Evangel's gonna need stops at this end. And Grace, despite two for 18 shooting from three, has been able to pile up the points. Even without much from the Gibbs brothers. Stoltzfus, three. 11-point lead for the Lancers, their largest. And what was the whistle at the end of this? Maybe a delay of game warning if Gibbs touched the ball after it went through the net. Doesn't appear we're going to get an announcement. But no foul or anything, so I would imagine just a warning issued to somebody. Looked like Jacob Gibbs. Either way, Evangel basketball down 11. Cavalier, another one. Why not? Carson Cavalier averages six a game for the year. He has 18 today. 
on six three-pointers. And Evangel's back within eight. Wadding. Thought about going for the answer. Ian Scott. Gibbs will try it. No. Rebound loose. DeVault has it. DeVault on the run. Up against Scott. He is fouled. It's either Scott or Stoltzfus. Either way, it's two free throws for DeVault. And it's Stoltzfus who gets it. He was in pursuit. Here's Cavalier. He's done a really nice job using screens. It's good footwork. Ready to go on the catch. DeVault at the free throw line where he has made three out of four. 9.6 rebounds for the sophomore from Norwood, Missouri. And he gets the bounce. Evangel has made just 9 out of 15 free throws, 60%, ordinarily a 74% free throw shooting team. Two more games still to come today, Langston and Indiana Wesleyan up next, then College of Idaho Morningside to finish it out. Winner of this game will take on top-seeded Fried Hardeman, which already beat Central Baptist earlier today in comfortable fashion. We'll be off tomorrow and then back on the NAI YouTube page and on X, formerly known as Twitter, Monday night, 5 o'clock Central, we'll tip off between Fried Hardeman and the winner of this one. Malone had coffee pinned out to Cade Gibbs, who hits a three. Cade Gibbs has been nearly silent in this game because he's been held to so few minutes with his foul trouble, but he's made them count. Ten points, three rebounds in a dozen minutes. Playing with four personal fouls. Pritchett looking for the back cut of Mason. Knocked away by Cade Gibbs and saved by Graber. Scott surveys. Mason nearly got his hand to it and a foul into Bryson Graber after he was unable to pull in the pass. And that takes us into a timeout. Bryson Graber who only has two points in the game, will be at the free throw line for the first time in the ninth, shooting two when we get back. Nine point, Grace Lee. To become a nurse or advance your practice as a nurse begins at the University of St. Mary. For over a decade, students have chosen USM, not just because of our reputation in nursing education, but because of our approach to teaching and learning. Individualized, accredited, cutting edge, applicable. Opportunity awaits you here. Choose your path and prepare to change lives. University of St. Mary, stmary.edu slash nursing. It begins as all great things do, with the flicker, a spark of hope, a moment when you realize that given the right conditions, everything is possible. Here, we think the best way to find yourself is to look beyond yourself, because what defines greatness is a single choice, to not condemn the darkness, but to light a fire. through to Monday night's first game of the Fab Four. The winner of this game will join them and play at 5 o'clock Monday evening Central Time. Langston and Indiana Wesleyan, Morningside and College of Idaho still to come later this evening to defy, decide the matchup in the second Fab Four game. Nate Gatter and our crew back with you from Kansas City on the NAI YouTube page and on X. Graber gets both free throws. It's back to an 11-point lead for Grace, matching the Lancers' largest advantage of the day. Pritchett turns past Gibbs to the rim. Reverse, no, but a foul. Whistle goes on Ian Scott, his second. Make it his first and the team's eighth but it'll be two shots for Pritchett 
who has been held to five points on two of nine for the field. One for two with a foul line. Now six points, four rebounds, five assists. He's added a block and a couple of steals, so he's done different things, but certainly Evangel used to getting more scoring from Pritchett. Been around a long time. Spent a redshirt year at Rockers before transferring back to Evangel, which was neck and neck during his high school recruitment. Now in his fifth year in Springfield and all over the EU record books. Backdoor feed out of bounds, last off Evangel. Pritchett leads in steals, second in assists. He's scored more than 2,050 points in his career, fourth all time. Race ball up nine. Sikafus, Euro into coffee and a foul. Foul on coffee is his third. And the 13th called against Evangel since halftime. Sikafus at the foul line for the first time, 87% shooter. Grace has done well at the line in this game. 16 out of 20 and 12 out of 15 in the second half when they've just about made a living at the foul line. Though they've also shot much better from deep, three of eight after they went just one for 13 from three point range in the first half. Coffee on Scott, four minutes to play. Got Scott in the air and scores. Grace is 345 from a one seed on one seed Fab Four date with Fried Hardeman on Monday. Gibbs, Cavalier went down, fall the way rattles out, rebound loose, DeVault chases it and it's out of bounds off Sikapus and it goes to Evangel. DeVault and Pritchett ordinarily combined for a little more than 29 points a night. They have 18 in this game. Carson Cavalier has picked up a lot of the load. DeVault, the floater, kicks off the iron and rebounded by Sikafu. Graber turns the corner, finds a back cutting Scott. He has it blocked by DeVault. Cavalier goes right through what was probably a foul by Graber and then a costly mistake by Josh Mason who was standing on the sideline when he caught the pass. Good ball handling and a good dish by Cavalier, but Mason unfortunately for Evangel had his heel or both heels on the sideline. 3-0-1 to go. Grace basketball up by nine. Malone wants it, lob to him. Malone turns and dunks. 16 for Malone, matches Scott for the team lead. And an 11 point Grace lead. Coffee from 17. Rebound Gibbs. Sikafus ahead of the pack, slows it down. Gibbs fouled by Cavalier. The head's maybe starting to drop a little bit for Evangel. Malone has such patience when he makes those catches deep. Let Coffee go by him. Jacob Gibbs, five of six at the stripe in this one. Gets the bounce, five of, or rather a six of seven. Those Grace fans might be spending a couple of more days here in downtown Kansas City. Last year, it was at this stage that the run came to a close. The Lancers came in at 31 and three but picked up their fourth loss of the season in the quarterfinals against the Georgetown Tigers. Now they're 220 from a Fab Four. 
third straight trip to Kansas City. Looking for their first Fab Four since 2013. Cavalier thought about it. Looks inside for Mason. A diving Stoltzfus got his hand to it. DeVault takes some contact and rattles home the floater. Timeout called by Bert Capel, and he is furious that he didn't get a foul on that floater by DeVault. There definitely was hip to hip. The question would be whether Stoltzfus had already established legal guarding position. If he did, a little bit of incidental contact that's initiated by the offensive player is allowed. Either way, Evangel trails by 11 with 2.06 to go. That's the second time out Cable has used in this game. He was a sophomore on that 2002 Valor National Championship team. Under Hall of Famer Steve Jenkins. He has Evangel back in the quarterfinals for the first time since they won the title 22 seasons ago. The second all-time meeting, by the way, between Grace and Evangel. The first one was in 1961. And Grace won that game by a single point. 63 years separating the two games between Grace and Evangel in their histories. Stoltz missed the trigger against an Evangel full court press with two and change to go. Sikafus took some contact from DeVault. Near steal by Pritchett. Stoltzfus in a straight jacket throws it away. He's looking at the official who shakes his head. There was a lot of contact allowed on that possession, but it's the final two minutes of a national quarterfinal. You can see why the officials would rather restrain themselves. Here's Cavalier. Pritchett. DeVault drives on Moore. Rather on Scott. Underneath, it's Mason for the layup. Inside 90 seconds in a nine point game. Mason takes a tumble. Threw his head back again. And the Grace fans are furious, wanting a flop call on Mason. Here's Gibbs, tied up by Mason, who tumbles again. Even the assistant coaches on the Grace bench are mimicking Josh Mason, saying he's flopping all over the place. But ultimately, Jacob Gibbs goes to the foul line. And if Evangel was going to give a foul like that on the perimeter, not a lot of sense in letting Grace run off close to 20 seconds there. There's been an intensity to this game, especially between the two fan bases, that I think surpasses anything we've seen so far here in KC this year. The Evangel enthusiasm from the jump certainly played a role in that. Pritchett for three. Got it. Final minute. Evangel putting on a full court press in an eight point game. Timeout, Grace. Pritchett's first three of the day. Got an opportune time for, Evan for Evangel to close it down to eight points. Fifty nine point six seconds to go. Evangel now has made its last three shots for the field and six of its last eight. But unfortunately for Burt Capel and the Valor, they're just running out of time. Looked like if I can read his lips from here that his last words to his team as they broke the huddle were keep going. Nothing else to do but keep going. The possession arrow favors Grace. The Lancers are well into the double bonus with Evangel having been called for 15 fouls in the second half. Traber to trigger on the sideline. Gibbs gets away from Pritchett. 
Stoltz was happy to hold back for Graver fouled by Pritchett. That's his first. And two free throws coming for Bryson Graver. Who had only attempted 20 free throws in 34 games all season. 14 out of 20, that's 70%. He's made his first two in this game. And the Evangel intensity has... Uh, Become looks of concern with just 51.9 seconds to go. Graver gets both. Grace continues its fantastic free throw shooting in this game. 85%, 23 made free throws. Pritchett, Mason, little wiggle. Pritchett has to get it up from 30 plus. Off the mark, rebound to Scott. Grace just about there. Stoltzfus and no Evangel foul coming. The Valor fought valiantly. But the Lancers will move on to the Fab Four. Stoltzfus will take the shot clock violation, it would appear. And the Grace fans and bench start to clap in unison. Knowing they are headed on beyond last year's quarterfinal defeat. That is all. Top seeded Freed Hardman awaits. And for the first time in 11 years, the Grace Lancers move on to the Fab Four. That three pointer will count for Cavalier at the horn. The official final is 83 76 Grace. And Scott Moore and his Lancers will enjoy an off day tomorrow. They will move on Monday night, 5 o'clock Central Time, right here on the NAI YouTube channel and on X to face off against top-seeded Freed Hardeman. Evangel deserves a ton of credit. A phenomenal season. Two rounds further than the Lancer, or rather than the Valor, have made it since the 2002 national title. They galvanized that fan base a lot of who made the trip up from Springfield. And they can hold their heads high as they walk out of here. But in the end, Grace just too much in the second half. The Lancers made only four threes on 19% shooting, but they scored efficiently as ever from the inside. They made 85% of their free throws, and they survived to move on. 83-73, two one seeds through to the Fab Four. Grace and Fried Hardeman coming up 5 o'clock Central Time. Head on over for our next game coming up in 20 minutes. Langston and Indiana Wesleyan is next. <laughs>